Hi everybody. So today in this video, we're going to talk about the chain rule. So the chain rule allows you to take the derivative of a new type of problem. Uh, that is, you guys have seen this in math before, the f of g of x problem, where you have f of g of x in your function, right? Um, now, not every time is g of x going to be defined for you. Sometimes you just have to um, make your g of x to make the problem make sense. Uh, so before we get to that, uh, let's write the Leibniz form of the chain rule. This is my favorite form. I think that it works best for physics. Um, and it doesn't use f and g. It uses uh, variables. So say we have a z of x function. Um, then the derivative of z with respect to x can equal the derivative of z with respect to some function y times the derivative of y with respect to x. Um, so in this example, you could say that z equals f of x and y would equal a g of x. Now this is gonna make more sense once we get to our practice problems. Uh, but let's let's get Newton's form as well because you know not everyone has my opinion or thinks of math the way I do. So if we have um, f of x, now let's let's change that. Say we have f of y and g of x. Now let's change that. We have f of y and y of x, right? So the derivative, derivative d over dx of f of y would equal the derivative of f of y times the derivative of your y of x basically take you the derivative of the outside of the function times the derivative of the inside of the function, which is going to make more sense as we get to our practice problems. So let's get to our first problem. Um, I will erase this while I read the problem for you. So we have f prime of, x, of g of x we want to find, f prime of g of x. Uh, find f of a, if f of x equals x to the 100 power and if g of x equals x squared plus 1. So uh, f of g of x is going to look like x squared plus 1 to the 100 power. Now, if we tried to do the power rule of that, it simply wouldn't work. Uh, so that's why the chain rule uh, exists. So what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of the outside, f prime of x, then multiply that by the derivative of the inside, right, of g prime of x. So what is the outside, right? So the outside of this function is x to the 100 power. If we take the derivative of that, we can use the power rule. We have 100 x to the 99, right? Now we have the inside of the function, which is x squared plus one. If we take the derivative of that, g prime of x is two x, right? Just using the power rule. Now uh, we would multiply those together, but we also have to put g of g prime of x in for x, right? So uh, this would yield, we start off with, uh, let's see, how should I write this? F prime of g of x. I think that's the right notation. So we start off with 100 x to the 99 times 2x, right? But then we have to put our function right back in because this x is a placeholder for this, right? 
So then this becomes 100 times x squared plus 1 to the 100 times 2x, which then be simplified to 200x to the x squared plus 1 to the 99 power. Whoops. Goofed. There we go. So uh, Newton's notation kind of makes that difficult because I used the x in every form. Maybe if I would have used y, that would make a little bit more sense to know that this substitution needs to make sense. Okay, I'll erase this. Uh, pause it if you need that, that work, and we'll work through number two. Okay, number two. We want to find dz of dx, the derivative of z with respect to x, if z of x equals x cubed plus 7x squared plus 1 all to the 4 thirds power. Now, this is the more common problem that you'll run into is that you don't really have an inside and outside function like you did before. It's all one function and you have to define what your middle function will be. So what would you use for y of x? Because we'll just keep with x, y, and z, right? So let's say that z of y, because let's take the inside out and let's just substitute it. We have y to the 4 thirds power, and then y of x equals x cubed plus 7x squared plus 1. Now the Leibniz definition starts to make more sense. If dz dx equals the derivative of z with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, you can't just say that, oh, this is easy math. I'm just going to cancel these dy's out. That's not how that works. Um, but what we can do is we can take the derivative of z with respect to y. We are more than capable of doing that. That would be... Uh, the derivative of y to the 4 thirds, you bring down your exponent, 4 thirds, multiply it, then subtract 1, or 3 over 3, which would give you 1 third, right? Then we need the derivative of y. So that was this right here, dy, dz dy. Now we need dy dx. So dy dx we take the derivative of this polynomial. So we, derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Derivative of 7x squared is 14x. Derivative of a constant is 0. So now we have those two derivatives. Now what we need to do is we need to multiply these together. dz dx, we take our 4 thirds y to the 1 third and then we multiply that by 3x squared plus 14x, right? However, we don't want things in terms of y, we want it in terms of x. So let's substitute our y function right back to where it was, like we did last time, but it was a little bit more confusing. Um, I, I should have explained that better. So that means that dz dx equals, okay, so we will have, 4 thirds times x cubed plus 7x squared plus 1 all to the 1 third power times 3x squared plus 14x. And that is our derivative. It's really messy. Uh, and at that point, that's probably the most simplified you could get it. Um, you don't want to try and start combining those terms. That is as simple as that one gets. Okay. All right. Uh, pause it to get that work. I will erase it and we will do uh, part three. Okay. Part three asks find dk dx if k of x equals x minus 2x cubed to the negative 11. So uh, we need to split this up, right? Uh, so uh, for, we also need a middle 
letter. So J K L L is not a very good one. We'll we'll use M. Okay. So uh, let's say K of M equals M to the negative eleven, and M of X equals X minus two X cubed. Okay. So that will mean that D K D X equals the derivative of k with respect to m times the derivative of m with respect to x. So now let's use power rule to get those derivatives. We have dk dm is just the derivative of m to the negative 11. So bring your negative 11 down. Subtract 1 from negative 11, which is negative 12. Right? And then we take the derivative of m with respect to x. So derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared. And now we will simply multiply those together. We have dk dx. So we have negative 11m to the negative 12 times the quantity 1 minus 6x squared. But remember, we don't want this in terms of m. We want it in terms of x. So let's plug in m of x. So this becomes negative 11 times the quantity x minus 2x cubed to the negative 12 times the quantity 1 minus 6x squared. And that is our derivative. And again, that's as simple as that's going to get. You've got that complicated exponent. If you want to distribute that negative 11 somewhere, go for it. But honestly, that is as simple as that gets. OK, now for our next uh, part, a chain rule word problem. This is where we're going to break down the method that we're going to use. OK, so students align themselves in a circle of radius r facing outward to avoid staring at each other. Uh, if they all begin walking radially, with a speed v, at what rate does the circumference of this circle increase? So this is going to seem tough, but let's break this down. Okay, first let's do a required drawing. Okay, we've got students all in a circle, and everyone is walking radially, which means along the radius, right? So straight out. and they walk with speed v. Now we want to know at what rate is the circumference changing. So, uh, number one, what is our goal? Okay, oh, I keep doing that. So what is our goal? Our goal is the rate of change of the circumference. So change can also be uh, described as a derivative, right? So you've got dc, dt, right? So if we said what rate is the position changing, you would say dx dt, which is velocity. Velocity is rate of change of position, right? You can say the same for circumference. The rate of change of circumference is dc dt. Okay, so that is our goal. We want the derivative of the circumference. Now, what are the givens? Well, it the givens are hidden in plain sight. Um, what we want is uh, the derivative of circumference with respect to time, but what we do have is velocity. And velocity is not telling us how the circumference of the circle changes, but it does tell us how the radius of the circle is changing, right? Because that radius is getting longer and longer at the same rate for everybody at speed v. So v is going to be our dr dt. Now, let's get some geometry to see what we're actually dealing with here. So the geometry of this, the circumference of a circle is given by 2 pi r. And you can see that we've got an r here that's also right over there, which is going to be very important in doing this derivative. So uh, if we want dc over dt, we could say that that would be the same as dc dr times dr dt, okay? 
Now, we already have dr dt. It is velocity. Now let's say, what is dc dr? Well, if we take the derivative of circumference with respect to the radius, uh, that would be the same as saying the derivative of 2 pi x, right? Well, the derivative of x becomes 1. So the derivative of r in this case would also be 1. So the derivative of circumference with respect to r is simply 2 pi. Now we want this uh, multiplied together. dc dt would equal dc dr, which is 2 pi, and dr dt, which is velocity. So the, uh, what did it ask for? The rate that the circumference of the circle increases is 2 pi times v, okay? Now, if any of that didn't make sense, go to our discussion post and ask your questions. Uh, I, I know that chain rule is pretty tough to learn on YouTube. Um, uh, next video, we will have some example problems where we go over more of the chain rule. Uh, and if you, I also recommend you go back over these problems and try them on your own. Um, try to do some of these, oh man, my buttons are not working with me. Try to do some of these functions up here. Uh, if you can just erase your work and try it all over again or make yourself a new function and just take the derivative and and get some practice in okay and like I said next time we will work over some more example problems for you guys to practice